Wall Street. The business of America is business, announces the new president, Calvin Coolidge, to which the people reply, keep cool with Coolidge. And the sound of the stock ticker begins to dispel the woes of those who were hurt by the post-war recession and those who lost their shirts in the Florida land boom and bust. As Will Rogers tells it, people wire in, buy me some stocks. The brokers answer, what kind? And the buyer wires back, any kind. Ain't they all supposed to go up? Hallelujah, hallelujah, shoo the clouds away. September 1929, soaring out into the wild blue yonder, stocks hit what looks like a permanently high plateau. Now here's a tip. Some of these prices will look ridiculously low in a year or two. New York swelters in a severe heat wave, but that doesn't stop anybody. Sure, there are technical readjustments once in a while, as the lunatic fringe of margin speculators is being shaken out, but conditions are fundamentally sound, aren't they? October, Indian summer, 1929. The day has come. Not so gradually, not so slowly. The market goes up a little, then it goes down a lot. In the decade of bad taste, in the revolution of manners and morals, the bears finally jump the bulls. It's over. All over. Over here. Here in Wall Street. The oracle still sound off. A technical readjustment, and the market rallies. Stocks always go up, don't they? Down go the common stocks. Down, down, down they go. Tuesday, October 29th, 1929, in history's worst panic, over 16 million shares are dumped on the market. Over 14 billion dollars go with them, and so goes the confidence of a nation. Wall Street lays an egg, and so do the 20s. It's over. All over. As stocks go down, down, down. The greatest, gaudiest spree in history is over. The people have had one too many. Margin, more margin. There isn't any more margin. Hallelujah. The jazz age is over, all over. <laughs>